I watched I watched yeah. the speech by her when she was talking about the right for a mother to be a mother, the right for a woman to be a woman, the right for a man to be a man, the way that she said that her country, her religion and her society was being destroyed by the political left for no better reason than they just hated the country. Look, that resonated with me, but I've heard that, you know, some of her background is in the far right. Is she a goodie or a baddie? Um, uh, well, I, d I certainly don't think that she is a baddie. Like you say, her background when she was younger, that she was associated with some neo-fascist party. Um, but in many other ways, she sort of stands on her own merits and expresses her opinion. There is an article in The Guardian which is saying that um, people are concerned over human rights because of this. And I think that's just a step too far. And I don't think that's true in any ways. She isn't going to pull out of the EU like people are concerned. She has already said that she's not going to start tearing up women's rights. There was a, there was a lot of concern around um, her, her stance on abortion. She's, she's anti-abortion. Um, she, but she said she's not going to revoke that at all. Um, and that there's sort of no evidence to suggest that she's going to implement any radical... But, again, but, but, but I mean, on the, on, the issue, on the issue of being anti-abortion, I mean, I get criticised around here for being anti-abortion, but, you know, look... I don't believe that criminalising things necessarily stop them. So I believe that we should well, be exactly. supporting people uh, who are, who have unwanted pregnancies. But, look, you know, at the end of the day, the Catholic Church is pretty firm on this, and Italy's a Catholic country. I would have expected the Prime Minister of Italy to be anti-abortion. Well, there, there's no way that, like you say, that making abortion illegal means it doesn't happen. It just means you're going to get more deaths from it, more yes. backstreet abortion houses popping up and things like this. Um, but she does have to remain cautious as they have got a currently about £200 billion loan coming in from the EU to support them with their economy. Um, and so they, she has said that she's going to continue with the policies of her former prime minister. Um, but obviously Germany and France are feeling particularly prickly at this time. Uh, we've seen statements from Macron, which, I mean, they're, they're saying that they're positive, but they're coming across rather frosty in, in inferred meaning. But it, it, Italy, I mean, is famously... Actually, Italy's one of those places, I was about to say it's famously unstable, but that's not true, is it? Italy is famously a great place... And it's also uh, a stable place, and it's a place that is comparatively wealthy. It just doesn't have very good governments. Yeah. And and you know the thing that amazes me about Italy? It never seems to make that much difference, does it? No, in many ways it doesn't. And what, what we've seen, there hasn't been sort of any um, outrage that she's been put in. There hasn't been any riots. She's did a lot of what Boris did, actually, in 2019, where she's managed to win over parts of Italy which have for a very long time been predominantly on the left or left-leaning or they've been won by left voters. So what she's done is, in many ways, quite impressive. And she's the first female prime minister, obviously. These should be things that we should be sort of praising Italy for, you know, progressive of them perhaps, but this, this might be a good move and I guess time will really tell on that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I suppose uh, we've heard it so many times before, haven't we? X is far right, Y is a racist and all yeah. this sort of thing. And, and actually, look, you know, I... I uh, my background was I worked for Breitbart, then I worked for the New York Observer, which is owned by Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've met many of these people that are allegedly far right, and in my own experience, they, they tend to be genuine, reasonable and patriotic people. Now, there are people yeah. who are genuine racists and genuinely bad people, but I have to say, mm -hmm. I've met them from all walks of life in all political parties, and I will tell you, I, you would not see the level of anti-Semitism uh, that you, that's acceptable in the Labour Party in a political party mm. like UKIP or, or indeed the Brexit Party or the Conservative Party. No, I know what you mean, and in many in many instances, and probably in this one, the term far right, radical right, is almost used to to um, put down someone else's opinions in a way, make sure that they're not not very convincing because they must be just a far right or a radical person. So you know they they can't be believed, or they should be this terribly bad person. But often that isn't the case at all, and I think it, it's sort of an unfair stance to put on a woman who frankly hasn't done anything yet to achieve it except have a past from when she was younger that some people will disagree with. Absolutely. Look, we're going to go to a break in the moment. In a moment, but I just want to read out some of the tweets that have come in. Um, I think this is interesting from Nam Namron. 
who says that they're a pro-EU hashtag rejoin, but, well, welcome to the show, but um, the Chancellor met with hedge fund managers three days before he took uh, the measure that shorted the pound. What was said at that meeting? I think it's interesting. There's no doubt that uh, that Liz Truss was backed by some of the hedge fund bosses who have now made money from the pound's um, decline. Andre, why don't you give uh, give your guests... Uh, why don't you give us? Why don't you give us you and your guest condemnation of Keir Starmer's feet, speech? I know he hasn't made it yet, but what difference does that make? Yeah, I see where you're going. Uh, we're not going to do that quite yet. Um, also, somebody else getting in touch, Stephen Princess and Stable, who says that uh, part of the problem that we've had over the years is that Rishi Sunak and the Bank of England have lied to the public about monetary policy. Amen to that, brother. And uh, also some criticism of Keir Starmer. And to the person who texted me from the phone number that ended 234, there's no way on God's green earth I'm going to read that out. But anyway, more from me and Lettis Bromovsky straight after this. <laughs> 